I'm Kevin Rogers from Unknown Comics, and you're watching the Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we are going to talk about, real briefly, Red Goblin number two, because I am really enjoying this series, and I don't want to do full discussions on them, because overall, I feel like what's happening in this is just kind of like cool side symbiote fun, and it's not something that I really need to sink my teeth into, although it is bringing back some favorite characters of mine and some concepts that I liked that was done during the Dan Slot run. So, you know, I'm, I have a little bit of a bias here, so I will recommend this book definitely before we get into it a little bit more. But I will say there might be some minor spoilers ahead. So if you haven't read number two yet, you know, please go read it yourself and then come back here for the discussion and feel free to join us in the comments down below with your thoughts on this book. Um, so as we saw in the last book, it ended with, again, spoiler, we got Philip Urich back from the dead, which is, for me, cool. Like, I would have been fine if he stayed dead. That's okay. I like that character a lot. But if he stayed dead, I would have been like, eh, that's all right. You know, he died. He got killed by Norman Osborn. So, you know, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> so I would have been fine if he stayed dead. But the fact that they brought him back, I got all excited for it. I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. But how? How did he come back? I really want to know. So this issue explains that. Uh, this issue uh, by Alex Pecknadel and Jan Basaldua who uh, hopefully I'm not butchering any of those names because I think you both do a fantastic job. And I mean, no disrespect, um, but I uh, I actually haven't heard anyone pronounce your names. <laughs> so I'm kind of winging it here. But if anyone wants to correct me down below, I'd really appreciate that so I don't mess it up in future videos. Uh, so we get Philip, uh, Philip Urich, explaining what happened to him. And he says, you know, he got killed by Red Goblin when it was Norman um, back in the end of Dan Slott's run. And uh, that was during the Goblination stuff and all that happening. So when Phil died, he, you know, was buried and he was rotting, but a part of him was still alive. Apparently, Dr. Strom's uh, goblin formula, who that's where Norman got his goblin formula from, working with Dr. Strom, it had done something to Philip. Um, you know, something that I guess Norman kind of experienced, too. When he got stabbed by his glider, it kind of rejuvenated him. Uh, and he was in the shadows for years until he plotted the clone saga in the 90s. Um, but his son, it did not uh, reverse his death unfortunately. But for Philip, it, it did reverse his. It helped his cells continue to remain uh, and not break down so quickly until his mind and body started healing enough to where his brain and heart could activate again. And so when he comes back, he kind of looks zombie-ish because his skin deteriorated even though his heart and brain were still kind of alive. So that sounds terrifying to me. <laughs> it's absolutely a terrifying concept, um, if I'm understanding it correctly. Uh, that is terrifying. But there is a, a kind of a sweet moment here and something that Alex, who wrote this, clearly did some research on, you know, because, you know, Phil talks about his funeral and he's like, hey, you know, I was dead and, and nobody showed up except three people, which was really sweet of them because after everything I'd become, you would think they wouldn't have showed up. So Nora showed up, which that kind of makes sense because she kind of had a thing for Phil for a while. Um, but even though he went, you know, completely off the, the deep end and became the hobgoblin and stuff, uh, even too extreme for her tastes. Um, but then also his uncle Ben was there, Ben Urich. Uh, so that was really cool, you know, from Daredevil and Spider-Man comics. But then he mentioned Monet. And I was like, wait, Monet? Like th that was in The Losers with him? Was it that Monet? Uh, because if so, that's like a, a really deep cut reference there. <laughs> it's like, that's that's awesome. I have that miniseries uh, because one of the slingers is in it, Ricochet. And so I was like, uh, wow. that, And also because Phil's in it. Um, but I'm like, wow, that's what a cool little deep cut Easter egg thing there is that uh, out of all the losers, you know, uh, I, I would have put Ricochet in there, too, because I like the Slingers, so anytime I get to use them. But, uh, but yeah, Rick, you know, uh, Ricochet did not like uh, Phil by the end of that series. So Monet still having a soft spot for Phil, if that's the same Monet, I, I'm assuming it is. Then I'm, I was blown away. I was like, hey, that's really cool, <laughs> you know. Uh, so good job uh, on the writing on this, Alex. And Alex is the new writer uh, on Carnage as well. Rom V is no longer on the book, and Alex is on Carnage. So we will be talking about the Carnage series very soon, and I will catch up before Carnage Reigns comes out, so I just want to let you know that. Um, but in this book, we have Philip taking blood from Norman Osborn and, uh, you know, and extracting, like, just whole pints of blood from him, and Norman's weak, like, he's about ready to die. He's, he's asking for water, he, you know, he can't uh, function, and Philip's like, no, we're going to take every drop from you, dude, and he's like, and then I'm going to leave you just alive enough for your red assassin to come get me. And Norman's like, what red assassin? He's like, oh, I know, man. On, on the surface, my guys, you know, in issue one, they were defeated and they came back here. Some of my minions, uh, some of the other goblins of the Goblin Nation, 
And he's like, so they're back here now. And we're going to take this blood, create new serum, and inject all of us and make us superhuman. And we're going to be ready for your, your red assassin. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what red assassin you mean. Because Norman doesn't know that one, Normie is the red goblin, or two, that the, the symbiote goblin uh, creature thing is still out there. He has no idea about either. So uh, so he's kind of lost. He's like, what does he mean, Spider-Man? Like, what's going on? So uh, so Normie is, meanwhile, at school, he's getting bullied. This kid named uh, Anders, Timothy Anders, comes over to his rescue because he's playing like the, you know, his mom, Liz, is like, hey, look, you know, we're an elite family in New York. So paparazzi are on us. You know, I run Alchemex. Your father, you know, your grandfather, Pop Pop, he runs Oscorp. He's Norman Osborn. So we're pretty infamous slash famous around New York. So I need you guys, because they go to a private school, he's like, you know, Normie, you and your brother, you need to keep an eye on Stanley, and you need to just, you know, keep a low profile. So Normie decides when these bullies are beating him up that he's not going to fight back. And the bullies are beating him up because he brought cops to the school, because now there's cops and reporters all around the school, and, I don't know, the bullies are just using that as an excuse to beat up Normie. Uh, so this Anders kid helps him out and says, hey, look, your jacket got ripped up. So here, take my jacket so you wear it for the rest of the day so you don't look, you know, no one asks questions about, you know, you being in a fight or anything. And Normie's like, hey, thanks, you know, why are you doing it? And he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm here on a Stark scholarship, you know, at this school. So, you know, it's like a, a magnet school for smart children and stuff and rich children, I think, too. So he's just like, take my, you know, jacket and it's all good. And that's why later when Normie dons the, you know, the symbiote, because he's like, yeah, my grandfather was taken and he was brought down into the sewers and the cops are looking for him, but I don't think they're ever going to find him. Well, through this interaction with the bullies and Tim Anders, he overhears the term blood in the water. And he's like, that's it. You know, uh, he's like, I, I think I figured this out. He goes, hey, symbiote, you were kind of bonded to my grandfather at one point. You could probably sense him. Help me find him in the sewers. And that leads Normie to go into the sewers and find his pop up and battle the new, you know, or the old new <laughs> Hobgoblin Phil Urich zombie who is now pumped up full of more goblin serum from norman osborne's blood so yeah really cool and the, the artwork is just amazing like look at this shot i just love this shot um yeah i think it's fantastic i think jan does a killer job on the artwork i think the way even lettering like uh the dialogue like colors everything in this book i think just pops and it's fun like that's the thing it's like sometimes in comics we want like these deep interesting stories but I am a sucker for just something that's comic book fun, that uh, that makes enough sense to I get through the story and I don't nitpick it, and that's what this book is. It's just fun, and uh, you know, and so Normie doesn't want, uh, you know, Norman to know that he's the Red Goblin. He's like, look, I can't let my grandfather know that it's me or that the Sliver is still around because he'll probably put two and two together. He's a smart guy, so let's go in as kind of like our own creation, and and save him as this, you know, new faceless, you know, without teeth character. <laughs> um, and it kind of works, although Norman mistakes him for Spider-Man at one point, which is kind of cool. And uh, Hobgoblin or Phil Urich, uh, he knows, he's like, no, 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 show me your teeth. I know who you really are. So it, that's kind of a fun little thing they play with in this issue. Um, but it does end in a big battle. And then there's, you know, a little bit more that happens after that battle uh, that I, you know, is kind of the cliffhanger of the book. So I won't uh, say it, although it's not a big deal. Um, it's not like a huge cliffhanger. But they do mention the term all new, all different, which I thought was kind of funny uh, when they're describing this this group um, that show up. So, uh, so yeah, that was, you know, kind of fun. I, like I said, it's just like a fun book. And Hobgoblin, when he gets in the battle with uh, Normie, you know, as the Red Goblin, he uh, he found like a piece of his clothing. And when he lifts it up, it says Timothy Anders, uh, because obviously Normie switched jackets with that kid. So I imagine that's going to lead you know, uh, the Hobgoblin Philip Urich to Normie's school in the next issue, which would be uh, insane, uh, having something like that happen at a school, especially with today's, you know, things that happen in the world um, consistently around here. Uh, that's, uh, that's a terrifying concept. And I think this book so far has kind of leaned into some terrifying concepts like torture and things like that. And so, uh, although they still keep it PG-13, so I'm curious to see how this progresses, um, but I'm certainly liking the book right now. Like I said, it's it's fun. It's kind of scary at times. It's kind of uh, un, you know, unnerving at times, um, but then there's some great action and the artwork is phenomenal. So if you're out there and you haven't read Red Goblin yet, 
please pick it up. I think it's fantastic. It's definitely worth your time. And uh, I'd probably give it, maybe this issue, a four out of five. That's how much I'm enjoying this book. And that's how much I'm looking forward to the next one uh, because I'm hoping it just keeps getting better and better. The first issue, I also gave a four out of five, and this was on par with it. So the fact that it didn't lose any beats or steps from issue one to two, to me shows that like I'm, I think I'm in this for the long haul. So uh, Alex and Jan, as long as you're on this book, I'm going to check it out and I'll bring it to all of you parasites out there. Let me know what you think of the book down below. And as always, we'll keep talking in the comments. Thanks for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.